So this is Jack, my nephew. He's three years old. He's a mad North Melbourne supporter, uh, along with his brother and the rest of the family. July last year, my sister discovered uh, a lump in Jack's throat, just right next to his Adam's apple that required immediate scanning that day. So once the thyroglossal cyst was discovered, surgery was undertaken in August. A couple hours surgery in at the Royal Children's Hospital with Dr. Joe Cramery. Uh, they had to remove the cyst along with uh, some pieces of the bone in his neck. Thankfully, the cyst wasn't cancerous. And since the operation, he's been fine. A little scar under the neck, but uh, hasn't stopped him at all. The hospital's been amazing support to my sister and the whole family. And Fortunately, we were in the best of hands. I think when you have your own children and nieces and nephew who particularly need that support as well, it, it's a sobering experience to go into the hospital and it puts things into perspective. What an institution, isn't it? The Royal Children's Hospital. Yeah, it is. It's, that's just one of thousands of stories, isn't it? It's a privilege to be a part of it, to go in over the last few weeks and also to have first-hand experience of, of the quality work that they do. You walk in terrified and blokes like Jeremy Freeman and Daniel Gorshevsky and the doctors just take care of kids like Jack, who I met in the lift on the way out. He's a beauty. <laughs> yeah, he was... Uh, they weren't happy post the game. But, He's um, a beauty who was unhappy yeah, on that's um, right. Friday going home. So let's get to that game uh, north. They've been a part of the kick for the kids for all three years. Disappointing in the end, you see the tail of the tape. Joe Danaher was an in. He hadn't played for 349 games. It's uh, a long time between drinks for Joe, but... Apparently only got told at 10.30 that morning. Well, yes, obviously he was going to resume in, uh, in the VFL, but uh, once they lost Zach Clark, they decided to bring him. It wasn't named as an emergency, and the expectation is, therefore, he's gonna, they might get fined $20,000. And everyone asked the question, wh why is that? Like, why, if you bring someone from outside your emergencies, where are you going to actually get fined? What's the reason that AFL policy exists? Is it a manipulation of... I think it is, because otherwise... Integrity, integrity issue or something? Yeah, it's all Everything falls under that, though. Integrity yeah. sort of yeah. issues. But I'm really curious to see if he backs up on Anzac Day, because we know last year they sort of made that mistake um, with him where they played too many games in a row and it sort of stuffed him up for the rest of the season. I mean, Sean, coming back for your first game after a, a long stint out, is the body sort of feeling a lot sore than it usually would? Oh, it probably is, but it's interesting that he would have played VFL and then potentially mm. came in anyway, which mm. would have made it a, a shorter, shorter break, week. Yeah. So I would expect him to play on the back of having a game. Yeah. Having watched Thursday night, Lee, and Friday, the midfield battle will be fabulous. I assume Devin yep. Smith and David Zaharakis will come back into this outfit yeah. on Thursday. Well, they've both got sort of league speed. I mentioned it a few times ad nauseum today, really, but the ability to run quick and run long um, is, is what both Essendon, both uh, they've got that quality as, as Collingwood have. So, like, they kicked 18 goals and 17 goals respectively last week. Wouldn't it be fantastic if the coach said, let's see if we can make it a shootout? Yeah. But it won't. <laughs> the two coaches will be saying to themselves, how do we stop the opposition scoring more than 10 or 12 goals? Yep. So I, I just hope it's not just a lockdown game because, uh, because the defensive nature of coaches takes over. One and four now, Sean, obviously not the start to the season that the Roos would have hoped for. Is it a work rate issue? Is it a defensive mindset? Are you able to, as a group, put a finger on what's going wrong at the moment? Well, it's, it's probably all of the above, to be honest. Extremely disappointing on a big day for the football mm. club that we dished up that as players and we're well aware of the work now that needs to be done and what we need to go to work on. And um, It's another big week for us this week. We back up for Friday Night Football and... Um, that's always a big occasion. Players are excited to play on Friday, but we need to go to work during the week to rectify what happened on Friday. Is it? So we should have to be on the... Like, you're 1-4, as are the Swans and as are Melbourne. And it's like all of a sudden there's a high tempo required for this year, even more than last year, and the ability to play high tempo, which is like the running power. of Those three teams, 1-4, have all got the same issues, you would have thought to generalise? Well, it, it probably comes across that way when you're losing games, isn't it? It's, it looks a hell of a lot harder when you're down by 20, 30, 40 mm. points. And, and that's evident with the sides that are slightly struggling at the moment. And that was probably evident to the eye on us on Friday. So um, we, we back the personnel that we've got. We've displayed that we were able to do it last year, this year at times as well. Like I said, we need to go to work. It's important for us to get back on the horse this week in what's a big Friday night game.